of the EFF. Now, it says it would, of course, uh, rather uh, return to the Brackenville High School this morning. At the same time, though, parents have vowed to protect the school. The party is demanding that two teachers and the principal be fired after being part of a matric function that was allegedly only attended by white pupils. Just yesterday, protest outside the school turned violent. Our reporter, ENCS Ronald Masinda, is at the school this morning for more updates. Ronald, good morning to you, colleague. I mean, what can you share with us at this point? We've seen the images, the visuals coming of parents and EFF members of COI, of course, uh, just going uh, against each other there. But what's the latest? this morning. Well, very good morning to you, Tomelo. Well, tensions continue to simmer here outside of Brackenfell High School. We are seeing quite a heavy police and security presence outside of the school. Police fans continue to roam around. The far end, we are seeing quite a large crowd starting together, uh, made up of parents, of learners from the school, and also residents. Of course, they vowed to protect uh, the rights of the kids who are writing exams at this point in time. Reliable sources are also telling us that a large group of EFF supporters and members has started mm -hmm. to gather. They are expected to make their way sometime this morning here. And of course, yesterday they were totally outnumbered. Around 25 EFF uh, supporters came here to the school and they were totally outnumbered, uh, given that there were dozens of uh, uh, parents who attacked the, the EFF supporters. Uh, those are the reports that we got where the, when the EFF supporters, when they came here, they only came here to hand in a memorandum before we saw those ugly scenes play out. So the police and security will certainly be on high alert given that uh, the, the ugly scenes that we witnessed yesterday where also a 39 year old man was also arrested for f discharging a firearm but at the moment things are a little bit quiet but you, you, you can sense that the tension is certainly palpable. Well, I mean, let, let's, let's get into that as well. I mean, when we talk about those clashes, we've also heard uh, the condemnation there coming, uh, you know, from various leaders, including within, you know, the city, saying that there should be a better way to communicate. We're seeing more government officials saying violence should never be an answer. Uh, there should be a way with which to handle such issues. And talking, dialogue should be at least one of them. Yes, indeed. Well, even the Western Cape Education Department saying that, you know, these scenes were totally uncalled for given the, the stressful year that uh, learners have experienced under the COVID-19 pandemic. Now is the time that for them to focus on the exams. But what we also saw was uh, a widespread condemnation w regarding the actions that uh, the parents uh, decided to undertake, where EFF members seemed to just come here to hand in a memorandum and they, and they were attacked. Of course, they came here, the parents and the, the, the residents, after EFF supporters were here on Friday, and they believed that their children's rights were violated. And not only them, but also a, an activist here in Cape Town by the name of Fadil Adams, whom we spoke to earlier yesterday. I came to observe the madness. You know, in a, in a country as racially divided as this one, I believe what happened today is needed so that, so that the dialogue can start. You see, from where I stand, this might have been a misunderstanding. It might have been racism in its purest form. However, there are channels. There are places where you can go and lodge your grievance, like the Education Department, like the Human Rights Commission. But to come out here and intimidate and stop people from writing the exams, that is just criminal. Well, of course, Ronald, this way we'll leave it. Thank you so much, Shah Anker, rather ENC, a reporter, Ronald Masinda.